All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. This is part number three of Dave's 500 Stroker Dino Build video series. Anyway, this is the test between our uh, ported torquer intake and the performer RPM. Let me show you both intakes and then I'll show you the test. I did not add the uh, Wilson tapered spacer back to the performer RPM. So I'm going to show you the results, the best results from using the torquer without the spacer versus the RPM without the spacer. So it'll be apples to apples, kind of. Let me show you the intake. And I went ahead and laid our cam card back in here. If you'd like to pause and look at that, there it is. If you saw part number two, this one says, do not use dual valve springs. And I called and checked with Edelbrock on that. And that's just because the... Um, those valve springs with the stock rocker arm ratio that they recommend. Where are they at? Uh, it's somewhere on here. Yeah, you, sure seat 5792 valve springs. They are not recommended for the amount of lift that it would give you with a higher ratio rocker arm. So I changed, I used the springs that was on the Performer RPM heads right out of the box. And it caused me a little bit of issue if you saw part two. If you haven't, go check that back out. But here's our intakes. That's what y'all are here for. I spent five hours porting this thing, and I think I did okay. Um, I really had a really nice gasket match, and I showed Aaron. I made him get a flashlight out and look, uh, even though against his will. He said, man, you did really nice. Uh, the roof of the port was perfectly aligned. I was like, a, I don't know, maybe two or three thousandths on each side. The intake was larger than the... That one looks a little better. It's got less road rash. Uh, the intake being larger than the head opening window. And I didn't really touch the floors of the ports. You can see that here. Uh, so I spent a lot of time on this intake, and I'm really proud of it. I got to bolt it back on there before Dave picks the engine up. Here's a Performer RPM. Uh, this is totally as cast, like a brand new intake. Uh, the port windows were not terrible on it. Um, like mismatch or anything else. They got a little texture to them. They're not severely undersized or anything like that. Uh, they look smaller than the ones that I've worked on over there, obviously, but it's kind of hard to uh, pour a dual plane intake uh, just because it's so hard to get up into there. But anyway, that is what you're being, that's what you're seeing tested here is my ported torquer. And I'm just an amateur porter. Uh, nothing special about me at all. I watch YouTube and learn how to port. Um, and I got a few friends that helped critique me as well. But uh, Mr. Charles Servideo, he even told me I had a nice texture on this. So I appreciate him uh, commenting on my porting uh, video there. That was nice of him. He's a pro. Uh, but yeah, here we go. This is that dyno test. Let's get it. It's a big test number one on an unported Performer RPM Edelbrock on 500 stroker for Dave.
have to plot both these so the people can see it but horsepower is down what then you, yeah what you might do what i would probably do we just did three pulls a while ago to 62 i'd take those three and i would take these three yeah and i would i would do an average uh -huh. and i'd average the three pulls over put all the numbers on a spreadsheet and do an average right and i was prepared to average and then and then you know if you've got some real crazy spikes but that's another thing when you put them on average you won't have all those crazy spikes it'll be smooth <laughs> And if you need to smooth it, you can always bump a few numbers around in your spreadsheet. But, uh, yeah. It's... Well, I mean, I know that that intake is as cast where I have porting in that other one. So, is that worth 10? Depends on how bad the port match is. And that's, you know, who knows? You have to get a board scope to see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, it was a fun experiment while it lasted. Yeah, I mean, you're home and analyze the data. You'll learn something once you get it. I mean, it's, a, it's hard to look at a, 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 a bunch of numbers. And what happens is your eye always goes to the big number. Right. And, and then you're like, oh, well, well, you know, but you start looking at, you know, you start look at the whole curve and see what yeah, happens. The big numbers in the whole thing doesn't matter as much as the... Uh, What's the overall curve, yeah. And, and sometimes I'll do average torque. I'll right. Say, I'll take a from RPM to RPM, and I'll compare average torque on if I'm comparing some components. Because, you know... That's what makes that's what makes car fast. Oh yeah, shift recovery. So here's our dyno graph and what we learned from it. The torquer uh, peak horsepower was 629 at 5400. So I want you to kind of find that on the graph there. The RPM's peak horsepower at 5400 was 635.9. So I just want to kind of check that RPM there. Uh, what's interesting is uh, the peak torque was 677 by the torquer at 4,400. And peak torque for the RPM was 670 at 4,100. So the peak torque was 300 RPM lower with the dual plane. And it's a nice dual plane. Uh, but you'll notice in uh, the majority of these tests, the dyno guy, Aaron, um, he was having problems pulling the dyno any lower because he said this engine had so much torque down low that it was messing his dyno readings up or something. So he had to keep creeping it up um, closer to the peak values. A few things we might want to note, uh, the torquer itself uh, at 3,900 was at 636. And then it jumps to around 644 at 4,000. But the RPM was 650 foot-pounds from 3,900 to 4,800. So it really had some strong torque there. But it was all down low. So it was lower than the single plane, which I think the majority of the world would see that on their tests and whatever else. So rolling into this, I wish we could have pulled it at 2,800 just to see how much torque it had. It had to have been over 550, I would imagine, uh, with the dual plane. But the big jump for the torquer, uh, it had 670 foot-pounds from 4,100 to 4,600. So every one of those values is just a smooth, flat curve of 670 there. And when we upped it with the Wilson Spacer, it ended up being 682 foot-pounds. So it really surprised Aaron. It surpri surprised us all. Uh, the RPM was down about 10 foot-pounds uh, from those same RPMs, 41 to 4,600. So you can see the little dip in the chart. And lastly, the uh, torquer was 598 horsepower at 6,000. And the RPM, uh, surprisingly, it, it carried the horsepower just a little bit further and it was 609 at 6,000. So kind of an interesting side-by-side -side test here. 
If you did enjoy this video, check out my Dino uh, 400. It's at the same place, Coons & Company in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Um, I, I tested the uh, Performer RPM low deck versus a uh, tunnel ram versus uh, a ported street dominator. So check out those results if you haven't. I'll put a link for that somewhere here. But it's, it's a fun dyno series, and I've got a full build series on that engine and Dave's engine as well. And if you like big blocks or engine build series in general, my garage is filling up with builds I've got coming. Um, and if you want a sneak preview, this is going to be a uh, 512 stroker 440 source kit, uh, trick flow 240 heads, solid roller cam, and he wants that dyno. So that's going to be exciting. And here's a big dog. This is uh, started life as a 572. It's coming up as well, and the gentleman would like that dynode, so I've got to go through that. You'll see more on it soon. Uh, got the, old, the good old uh, Victor 440 heads. That's an aftermarket block, but going to be dynode, going to be dynode, and built on the channel here, so y'all be sure and subscribe. <laughs> Oh, that's a pretty bad little dude right there. Well, it's actually not a little dude, is it? She's a big girl. It's hard to, you know, when you're, you're used to you know, big blocks and hemis or something like that, you see one of these wedge motors and it looks, it looks tiny. It's hard, to, it's hard to relate that to being a 500 cubic inch motor. You know? It doesn't have the big footprint like you used to with a big block. And show them the intake. Tell them it's a 383. So, yeah. people.